As novelist E.M. Foster observed, one person with passion is better than 40 people who are merely interested. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wizards of the Street. I'm your host, Ramesh Damani. He cut his teeth in finance and markets while still sitting on his father's lap. A rank holder as a chartered accountant, today he manages over $2.5 billion of AUM in India. The secret of his success, he says he knows how to dodge bullets. Please help me welcome to Wizards, the MD and head of Northwest India, Niren Shah. Niren, welcome to Wizards. Thank you very much. It's an honor being here. Uh, Niren, thank you so much. Uh, Niren, a lot of my guests have come from financially unsavvy families. They were first generation in the market. But you came from a financially savvy family. Tell me about your early influences. So, I mean, my biggest influence on the markets was uh, my father. Uh, he was a chartered, he's a chartered accountant. He's 91 years old. And uh, even today, he invests in stocks daily. Uh, my mother also is an investor. My grandfather was an investor. And so I saw the you know, first few shares, original shares of ACC. So our dinner table conversations used to be a lot about shares, stocks, bow copies, things like that. So Yeah, that is an ancient relic, bow copies. Ancient relic. And so by standard nine, I was investing in stocks and, you know, been given balance sheets. And so, you know, that was like kind of very normal for me. Uh, but it's fascinating, the first few lakhs you made, uh, you made it yourself in the stock market. Tell me yeah. about that. So I was a sub broker during my college days at Sydenham College. I was told by my dad that no investment, just learn. I was actually learning under Professor Mankikar. And I started with my pocket money and kept reinvesting it. Of course, the index went from 1100 to 4500. This is during the Hashan Mehta boom. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, before I knew it, I'd made a couple of lakhs, you know, and I was um, telling my dad, let me buy a car now. And he's like, no, 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 nothing doing. Reinvest it back into the markets, right? So He was right. You don't want to buy a depreciating asset like a car. You want to stick to the depreciating assets. You learned that, I'm sure, over time. Uh, when I read your biography, uh, Niren, you have a fascinating biography. You met some of the most influential people uh, in the tech landscape of the next 20 years. Talk to me about who are some of the more prominent people you met and how they have shaped your career. So I got, a, I got the opportunity of working very closely with Meg Whitman. You she know, was she the was, head of eBay, right? She was the head of eBay, later HP on the board of PNG. And I ran mean, for governor of California. Ran for governor. Mistaken. She's the US ambassador right now. Then I also <laughs> had the fortune of working very closely with John Donohoe, who ran eBay.com. He's currently the CEO of Nike. Nike. Right. And uh, and then, of course, my two mentors here, Pramod Huck, uh, who you know was Forbes number one investor of the year, uh, and uh, Jeff Crow, who's the senior managing partner of Norwest. Uh, obviously, worked with uh, a lot of sort of, you know, amazing tech luminaries. people. Luminaries. Yeah, luminaries. And they've, right. they've actually disrupted the tech space, right? So, I mean, I was, I've been very fortunate. Uh, you talk, Meg Whitman, in fact, when you, the reason you got to know Meg Whitman is that you started something called Bazi.com, which was bought by eBay. Yeah. And when eBay bought it, Meg Whitman told you what about Bazi? So, you know, our, I mean, Bazi, we used to, we had an amazing product which we had built and the product was way ahead of its time. Of course, the internet at that time was 2 million users in India. This is way back in 2003-04. And when we saw, and when she saw our product, she actually said that this product of yours, which you've built, is actually three years ahead of eBay. And we're hoping that in three years, we'll be able to get to this product. Right? And she was very impressed by what that. What an and endorsement. Huh? What an endorsement. And how young were you at that time? I was 27 years old. And at that point of time, I was running product. And it was, it was unbelievable to hear that. And then we also realized that India was so small as a market at that point of time compared to India, uh, compared to the US. And um, at that point of time, we always wondered that had we built this product in the US, would we have been worth $100 billion? You'd have been Larry Gates, Bill, uh, Bill Gates, Larry Ellison, correct, Steve Jobs correct, kind correct, of formula. Correct. But you had a great job. You moved up to eBay uh, in America at that time. Uh, you came back to India in 2008 as a VC with head of Norwest. You know, this Tolstoy uh, wrote a very famous short story called The Three Most Important Questions in Life. We leave the questions to, to the existentialists. But in terms of equity investing, what are the most important questions that you ask? So look, you know, we are very fundamental investors, right? And in India, of course, everything starts in Hindi, you know, private markets included. Yeah. So I'm notorious for asking this question saying, kitna revenue hai, kitna profit hai, 
कौन है इसके पीछे यू नो वे ट्राई नो जज ओवर यर दैट इज दिस अ कंपनी विद यूनिट इकोनॉमिक्स राइट वे ट्राई नो जज दैट हु आर द फाउंडर्स सोर्ट ऑफ वॉट इज द क्वालिटी ऑफ द फाउंडर्स वॉट आर द एथिक्स एंड इंटेग्रिटी सो आई मीन आर जॉब इज टू सोर्ट ऑफ अंडरस्टैंड विद इन द फर्स्ट आवर गिवन दैट वी सी अ थाउजेंड डील्स अ यर टू अंडरस्टैंड विद इन द फर्स्ट आवर वेदर वी वॉन्ट टू परस्यू दिस और नॉट सो वे आर सोर्ट ऑफ यू नो वी गेट टू द पॉइंट वेरी क्विकली and uh, and you know again sometimes over lunch too over lunch too yeah. right and if the company does not have revenues uh, or profitability or management that you believe you will pass it over you're not scared to pass over an opportunity oh yeah yeah we we will pass all the time and that's the sort of nature of the beast i think there are companies which have not got revenue and profit and we have funded very early on but the management team the founding team that is very very critical that's interesting i know one company that you funded uh, despite not having particularly good revenue or definitely not profit was swiggy how did you come out with the idea of swiggy did you someone come it to you or did you search for it so this was a very top down <coughs> thesis actually at some level this started out in my household mm-hmm. where every sunday evening you would eat pav bhaji which is famous in mumbai and i would go have to collect that pav bhaji park in a no parking zone always get fined never find parking and then i was like listen how come we don't have something with delivers so we started a top down search in food tech which was not very popular and we looked at all the teams and we really really like swiggy and we really like their vision for sort of full stack food delivery all the way to your house within 30 minutes and that's how it all started No, but you went through which ones? You went through Zomato and a few others. Zomato, and Swiggy, Food why? Panda, Tiny Owl. There were a bunch of companies, and these. Then Swiggy was the tiniest. It was actually 500 orders a day, and obviously now they do a couple of million orders a day. So when we started, it was like it was not. It was a pretty contrarian strategy to actually go with the fifth largest player, or rather the smallest player there. But we really loved the founding team's vision. very clear cut they were very tech driven everyone else was doing these phone call orders i mean today we can't imagine that but they were very clear it has to be tech driven app was really app was amazing it was the vision was very very clear and again the energy with which they approached everything and the kind of you know the timing with which they were able to get consumer love it was just amazing so for us it was actually a no brainer you talk about you know turning down people what did you see in that management who was the md at the company that time doing 500 orders a day what did you see in him that you put the weight of norwest behind him so you know harsha and and harsha is the founder and yeah. continues to sort of run this amazingly well was a remarkably balanced guy and as i said earlier that it was just a very clear cut vision that food delivery you know a lot of people were like we will get some other delivery people to come but you know the vision was very simple that look when you're hungry you get angry right and you want your food to come on time Fast. you want what you decided so they were very clear that look in certain time with the technology this should reach you with minimal noise right and it should be a seamless consumer experience and you know that vision and then the ability to execute to that vision you know even at 500 orders when we called up a lot of customers they were raving about it so the ability to do that and execute at such a young stage with very no money because when we came in you know the round had not even been done so to do that it was so we were blown away then i know you are very fussy about unit economics you are very fussy about profitability this company had neither and does not have any of those even today so what what transfer what was the compelling uh, investment value there so it's a massive <coughs> need and a pain point and it's a massive market so there's food delivery and there's grocery both of these are very large markets the trillion dollar market when you count both of these together and it does take time and effort to build out markets like these along the way we have gone ahead and proven markets so we proved that bangalore could be profitable we proved that hyderabad could be profitable at this point in a few months it's very possible that the food delivery business there will be profitable but a lot of critics of swiggy and zomato complain about the new acquisitions that they've done i guess it's instamart in terms of uh... so instamart was built right so swiggy hasn't done any big acquisitions i think instamart swiggy started from but it's from bleeding within. money right it is bleeding money but the reason for that is again market size is massive it's a trillion dollar market so if you really look at this couple of years out and the size of the market and eventually today you see a household name like so you know you are able to see swiggy every people people who are delivering right every single morning there are people who buy swiggy instamart and uh, i think that actually in terms of the long run this market could be 5x the size of food delivery really yeah and uh, 
talking in terms of uh, when Zomato is already listed, when do you intend to list Swiggy? So I think it will take us a couple of years. We are in no hurry to list. But at the same point of time... They have enough cash here. They have part. more than enough cash. The unit economics are improving every single month. Mm. And it's a very innovative team. Talk to me about the startup scene in India. How are you assessing that uh, startup scene in India today? See, this startup scene in India, we are at an inflection point. You know, so I've, I've sort of felt that if you look at a 200 year history and you look at 100 years behind and 100 years in front, this is the 10 years to be in startups in India. We'll take a break, come back and chat some more with Niren Shah of Norway.